Well, I want to just pray, we just pray every year, pray for each other, every way, every way. Father in heaven, what a mighty God you are. You have given us this opportunity once again to worship you. Lord, let us come with a heart ready to worship. Let us come with a heart that is prepared. Let us come with a heart that is seeking a closer walk with you. We pray, Lord, for everyone who is gathered here at this time and all the other camps aligned to West Jamaica Conference, Jamaica Union, in people. Be with all the campers together as we seek our faith. We pray that this worship experience will be made. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Worship to you, please. Okay, thank you everyone. Good morning. Good Number four to two. Tell me that love the Lord. 
Revelation 21st, verses 1 to 3. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth, they are passed away, and there was rain to see. And I, John, saw the whole city, New Jerusalem, coming down from heaven, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them. Please be remain standing. May I see the hands of those who still believe that God answered prayer. Just with that, we believe that God answered prayer. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. I want you to pray something for me as you pray the Lord. We're going to give you a simple task this evening. 
I want you to find the prayer partner. The first is closest to you. And you are going to pray for each other for just a minute and 30 seconds. So turn to the person closest to you. Hold the person's hand. You will be praying for that person because they believe that God is going to pray. Please remember, we are together for worship. So let's join as we step on it for number one minute and 30 seconds. You are going to pray for your prayer partner. So each person has to be loved. One eye should be closed. No eye should be healed. And the person who are praying at this time. So go ahead and pray. One minute and 30 seconds as the music is played. Let us pray. Gracious God, Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that you have brought us together in this gathering. We celebrate the time with God that you have made an amazing God. We have come because we believe that this is an army of youth who you have great things in store for us to do. Oh God, I present into your hands those who are gathered from different homes, from different churches, having come together, Lord, because they want to enjoy fellowship and they also want to be close. Individuals who will go back home, transform and change. May Lord, you show the blessings the one has given tonight that we will be individuals who will be empowered to go and to, to do your will. I pray your blessings upon each child, each young person. I pray for your God that even as young as each person may be, even as they're together for them, but you may help them to know that you love them. But you want them to be a witness for you. Father, we commit the program into your hands and we thank you for what you have accomplished. And we say thank you, Jesus. And we thank you for what you do in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, please be seated. You know what, different people? All right, and we have the quiet because we continue. Thank you. As a challenge is prayer, there are times when we are faced with obstacles. We are greedy young people. We are greedy at times when we are challenged at school. All right, sometimes the whole world is difficult, yes? Sometimes we go through trying times. In different spheres, maybe through a pudding or through some other experience. But we want you to understand, young people, that when you crash upon a rock and it seems as if you are going to be crushed, God is still available. Amen? Oh, yes. The tempest will come, challenges will push you off course. Your ship may easily overturn or sink. Sometimes it becomes difficult, and sometimes things are totally out of control. But guess what? Even so, God is still in control. And He has our future in His hand. All we have to do is to prepare for eternity because God 
He is with us. Where he is, he will sing for us. Amen. Let's lift your hands and praise the Lord. Let's just lift your hands and shout hallelujah. Let's lift your hands and say thank you, Jesus. And he is worthy to be praised. Some folks may rather have houses and land. Some folks do stretch and forget about their own soul. But none of this thing. Our enemies from stirring my heart for now is time to make Jesus my God. For you know the road is rough and the going gets tough and the heat.
my my Christian journey started when I was young. So I think I was when I was six years old that I saw that everyone, my brother, my mother, my father was having communion. And I was left out. So my reason first is for wanting to be baptized so that I can enjoy or delight in communion with my wife. It was a good reason, but it was it was an interesting, right? All right, so fast forward, you know, about two years ago, or about one year ago, I I'm not proud to say I was in this space that I'm in right now. And I know that each of us are going through our own struggle. However, what at one point I was out and I said to myself, like the spirit said. Why are you here? To set the stage for you, it was a New Year's Eve night. And it was a New Year's Eve that I'm going to a Christian. When the fire was done, done, the party began. And the party was going to have the rum and the stuff for it. So I was in a place where I should have been. I was doing things that I should have been doing. However, my conscience, thank God my conscience was fighting me. So I said, why am I here? And when I went home, I prayed, and I, I started to see a, a shift in my behavior. I just slowly started to pray, just walk and talk to get out to I said, God, I have a desire to walk to change. How do I go about it? And I, I, I can imagine that both of us have the same experience of wanting to change, but you don't know who is this guy, you don't know what to do. So I decided, you know, all right, God, if I want to go on this journey, I have to commit myself to you, am I right? I have to commit myself to you, I have to commit myself to you, and I have to commit myself to right? So I'm probably not going to work. So I sat in my room, and I looked at the ceiling, found on and everything, and I met, and I talked to God at night. Ah, oh, thank you, just, just show me, just a little, a little tap on the shoulder and say, all right. This is the way she go. And I stumbled across a, a YouTube video. And for some persons, it would, it would be an impact. But for me, it was as if the video was speaking to me right when I needed to hear it, just the right moment. And I said, God, if you did not decide, I'm going to take this side. Take that, this is the side. So I started to change my habits. I started to participate in church, I started to drop in the company, so I tell my friend, I said, hey, if you're going to go home, and have someone with Jesus, you can't go, go in back. If you have to go in a company shop, and have to tell my phone, you can tell me, no, no. All right. Because if you have to put yourself in a position to God, and work in you. No, no, can't read it, because God has a poor money. So my testimony is that it starts from inside, it starts from a desire. Because if I ask God to help you, and if you just want to try and get the wheel going, nothing will happen. You will be stuck in a stagnant routine. And a routine is good, but when you get bad habits, you become a detriment situation. So, my, my thought to you guys, or this is the same thing, is that prayer is everything. But without work, the prayer won't be anything. Because if I ask God, I say, God, help me. And you still have to let you see your way. God will help you. God will try to put a way. But if you don't get up and grab it, nothing will happen. So as we go through this gap, I know that each individual will have their own separate trouble, whether it's school, relationship, peer pressure, and so forth. Just stop. Take a minute to pray and ask God, say, God, how can I? What is it that I do to? Change that situation. And I, I'm not asking and I'm not speculating. I'm telling you, when you pray and you move towards that prayer, God will work. Thank you. What a powerful testimony, man. Oh, yes, it shows that when we place ourselves in God's hands, He can do wonderful things. We're at the juncture where God's my servant, where once again, feed us with another object lesson, another message for this evening as we enjoy 
the best for service in the building of Holy Ghost. Pastor Richard Clark would have shared message. Did you enjoy the message this morning? All right, everybody remember what was put in the door in the car? What was put in the car? Start with everyone else. All right, and it shows that the world and, and God children are what? Step work is not so. And so tonight I am sure that Pastor Richard Thorpe will have another message for us as he leads us closer and closer to God. But just before Pastor comes, our prayer team and others will come and we'll do the song meditation. And then we will have Pastor Richard Thorpe once again sharing the word of God with us this evening. Bless the name of the Lord. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord, everyone. Bless the name of the Lord. Let's hope in Jesus. Oh, when your burden is heavy, cause you have strength, and you see there's no mercy. For it's been delayed, like the body of God, you gotta arrive, you gotta go. See, yeah, I'll turn to my father and go back to his home. There's hope in the Lord, there's hope in the Jesus. There is no big God, 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 but we have a big heart now. There is a silver lining, and at the end of the road, there is hope. If you believe that there is hope okay in King Jesus' name, praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Amen.
There is an affection you feel towards somebody. There is, is affection towards somebody. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yes, sir. All right, all right. That is love. Um, thank you very much for your for your answers. So another question. Another question. I'll do one more, one more. No, it was song that never goes away. But Thomas is mountain to find his time. Each week he will take some stairs, take the other step. The value of the man who brings drinks to the day. It cannot be defined. Explain, God, our soul, the force of the heart, to the reason why. You know, I love where you're going. You can love, I love it. Thank you. With that, with that young people, with that young people, yes. Amen. Father, Father is love. Thank you very much, everybody. So one more question. One more question. What is forgiveness? And if you have the back now, and if you have the back. Go on here to the show, Tim. Yes, sir. Right, then you are. Then are you almost. Thank you, somebody. Anybody else? Give it somebody else a second chance. Yes, sir. Keep up, sir. Yes, 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 sir. Accept the person, give us that what they do to you. Anybody else? Yes. We need to let go of resentment and anger of people that hurt you. You want more from this side. I've got this title for a Thank you. Thank you very much for giving us. Forgiveness is total restoration. Forgiveness is total restoration. What do I mean by that? Everybody. What do I mean by that? Remember, no, no, we are preparing to go here. We are preparing for eternity. Forgiveness is total restoration. What do I mean by that? Anyone, two people, one person. Where are the hands? Where are the hands? Where are the hands? Nobody knows? Okay, thank you very much. Say bye to them. Okay. Oh, yeah. Restoration is something that is um, restoration. Restoration is you have to last of something. It has to be restored. Right. Thank you, thank you very much. Total restoration. I'll go back to that. When somebody hurts you, when somebody sins against you, what happens? Because it's not separation. You lose trust. And two, you lose confidence. That bond is no more there. And only that. But when that person hurts you or sin against you, that person's value 
in your eyes have been lowered. So that person is lower as valuable to you as before. So when, when we talk about total restoration, we are talking about restoring that person's value. In other words, we are not going to go to the Twitter of you. We have a Twitter of church and the Twitter of taking money. Total restoration does not mean that you put back that same Twitter in the Twitter of the world. That is not total restoration. We are talking about the person's value, restoring the person's value. So when, when we think our value has been lowered, when we ask God for forgiveness, our value is being restored. Now, here is now another question. Is there a limit to forgiveness? Is there a limit to forgiveness? Is there a limit to forgiveness? If you say no, tell me why you say no. Why do you say yes? Tell me why you say yes. Bring a hand. Yes, ma'am. Tell me why you say no. We have to ask you something so many times. Seven. Are you all right? Is there a limit? I speak. All right. All right. All right. No, here is some. Here is some closing. According to Luke chapter 17. Luke chapter 17, is a piece, verse 3 and 4. It says, Take heed to yourselves. If thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him. And if he repent, forgive him. Verse 4 says, And if he trespass against thee seven times in a day, and seven times in a day turn again to thee, say, I repent. Thou shalt what? Forgive him. Chapter 17, verses 3 and 4. Now, my own people, my own people, how many times, according to who, is that brother's protect against the usual one? Forgive him, right? And if he sins against you seven times in that day and turn and repent, how should you forgive him again? Starting to move, right? We should. Now, here is something. You can do the calculation when you get home. I asked earlier if there is a limit to forgiveness. Here is now. Seven times in a day. How many days per week? How many? Seven days. Seven times seven. And how many years? Are a lot of How many? Three, four, and one. Three, four, and ten is seventy. So it is seven times in one day and, and, and seven days per week and seventy years. How was that? It? Don't do the mass. When you get to what we do, Bible says that we 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 to be three four. And then, but after, after as soon as you reach 70, you think that you're not sure. So if you say that there is a limit, the limit is when the person what? dies. When the person what? dies. So it does not matter how many times you have been offended by the same individual, our responsibility is, and since we are on a journey, how we are preparing for eternity, our responsibility is to forgive. Forgiveness, forgiveness does not help only the offender, but it helps you. 
All of you know saying there. The truth is that if you receive this again, then you are going to be stressed out and depressed. Now, here's a question. Let us get it together, please. Come back, please. Are you willing? Are you willing? Because you are on this journey, because you are preparing for eternity, are you willing to restore those who have wronged you? If you are willing, just raise your hand. Well, amen. Thank you for the hands that we I am going to ask again. And I know that we are struggling. I know that we are struggling with this forgiveness. Hey, I'm going to ask a different question. Will you try by the help of God to forgive those who have wronged you? Raise your hand. All right, there it is. There it is. There it is. I, I think there it is. I know you're struggling. I know you're struggling. Many of us are struggling with this issue of forgiveness. But I'm here to let you know that God is able to help you through it. He knows where you He knows what you are going through. He knows the struggles that you are facing, that you are having. And God is able and available to assist you young people, you others, with this issue of forgiveness. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed, our hearts are lifted evermore. Let us pray. Our oh God, we thank you so much for allowing us to be here this evening. Thank you for yourself. Thank you, Lord, for your words. We ask that as we contemplate on them, that they will have a positive impact on our lives. And we will grow in wisdom and exactly and in favor of God and in I just want to leave these few words with you. Doesn't matter who you are. Doesn't matter where you are. Doesn't matter what you're going through. God sees. God knows. He is here.
This is Jesus. That verse, where you are, this is not a quote, but think about it. Your love for God, the challenges, the struggles you're going through. We're right where you are. Shut up, everybody. Close out the word. Tell God what you want to be changed in your life at this time, right now, today. Maybe you're struggling with not loving the way God wants to do Maybe we are struggling with forgiveness. Maybe we are not caring as what God wants us to be. Just one minute, hold on to that. Close your eyes. Want to come? Don't look at me. Talk to him. He's the only one who knows us. Don't talk to any friend. Don't tell him your secret. Say it. Get out. Thank you. 
Beginnings, 